six months it's been for Andrew Johnston from uh, his lovely home in Carlisle onto Britain's Got Talent performing in front of millions of ITV1 viewers, a uh, best-selling CD, new Christmas single out and look we have them on ITV local, it's great to see you. Yeah. What a weird old six months it's been for you. It's been a crazy six months, I just would make my album being on the Britain's Got Talent tour and all the promotional stuff I've been doing up and down the country. So yeah, it's been quite a, quite, um, quite a busy time. Bit of a journey yeah. for you, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go, go back. back. Can I stop us for a minute? Can I just stop us for a minute? Because it was my fault. <laughs> Sorry, I've worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been doing that lip sync thing that's put me off. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to do something with that. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it now. That was a nice rehearsal. Was it? Uh, yeah. Great, yeah. Take two. Happy, take, take two. two. It's your fault. It's my fault. To some youngsters at a, a school today, and you said, you know, once you're a member of a choir, you're a professional singer, yeah. and that's how you've got to approach it, really. Mm -hmm. You have to, well, yeah. As soon as you join the choir professionally, you have to be permitted. You have to be oh, committed. Like committed. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I've been many times. I would say. <laughs> so you've got to be, you've got to be dedicated. You can't, you can't do it part time. Yeah, you, can't, you? you can't just one day say I'm not going in. Because sometimes I did that, but sometimes I did that. But I had to learn not to. I had to learn to be committed. And then yeah, so but that was when I was younger, of course. You know when I first started. Because he's so old now, at yeah, 14. So old. <laughs> but that's hard. I'm a little grey Yeah, <laughs> don't say that, please. Look at this. <laughs> but it's hard when you're young, isn't it? Because, you know, you want to get out with your mates and you want to, you know, maybe play on a games mm -hmm. machine or something. So it's really hard to commit yourself to singing, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to, if that's a choice you have to make, really, to, to make a career of what, to make a career of what you like doing or really end up with the wrong people and to start well, end up with nothing really. Mm. Some of your, oh, most of your mates are really nice but there's some kids out there who really who haven't got the because they've you know left school and everything and really haven't got a job and if you they end up like, like no I'm saying that really I So they lose their direction. Lose their really. direction just yeah. like they have but everyone can just they just put their mind to it, they can go for anything. You know? Right. But, but, but did you think, you say you, know, you wanted to make a career of it, and clearly you have now because of the programme and the CD and Simon Cowell supporting you. Mm -hmm. Did you really think when you were, you know, in those very early days when you were 9, 10, 11, 12, that you could make a living out of, out of your chorister work? Mm -hmm. No, it was just, I was just, I started, I, I couldn't, everyone's got a talent, everyone just need to find it. Um, but I was just, I got told by my teacher I was a pretty good singer, why don't I just go to the computer trial. Started off as a probation, I just go in, had an audition I got through and really, yeah, I just started as, as a normal little probation and then I got, I started to get really good training. And then I started, I made chorister and then I started to get, more, just, I started, my voice started to get a little bit better and then, and then I got senior chorister, started to get better again, and it just kept on carrying us. I got deputy and then head, and wow. I was no. I mean, that's a big deal becoming head chorister, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good training. So you don't have to be a singer to join the choir. That's what my choir master says. Um, people have been chorister in the choir before, and they can't sing, you know. But well, they can, but not, you know, yeah. not. But you don't have to be. You have to be. You have to be, um, you know, really good behaved, 
But that's why I got mostly I got head crunchy because I'm a little bit I'm a little behaved sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. sometimes. I, bet if we, I bet if we sat your mum down here, we'd hear about the times that you weren't. Yeah. But it it is you know we know you now as an individual artist. You know you're out on your own and it's solo work, but being in the choir, I mean, you really are a team player. Yeah, I, You're I'm working with friends and you don't want to let them down. I'm and... always, I'm always at the choir. I'm never going like, to let go of the choir. So I thought it may be here. If I just go around and say, oh, I don't want anything else to do for the choir, it's just, well, it's like, it's, to them, I've got here today, so yeah. I, I always want to be a part of the choir. And it's not a bad life, is it? Because you, you've got to travel the world. Yeah, you've seen lots of countries. Yeah, I've got to travel all over the world um, for the choir. You get paid, you get to meet new friends, you get everything. Got paid? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was good. Um, but I spent it the first day, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes, I bet. Yeah. I know. So let's let's move on a bit. So you you know, you know you grew up in Carlisle, the support yeah. of your mum, and she encouraged you to do what you love doing. Yeah. And then suddenly out of the blue again, thanks to your mum, you end up on Britain's Got Talent. How did... How did you find out that she wanted that she'd kind of put you forward for the programme? There's a letter come through saying Andrew Johnson on it. I opened it as usual. It's like I open any letters, even if they are my mum's. I used to open them and then I go, oh, it's Britain's Got Talent. And I was just really excited. I thought I'd be forward or something. But I found that my mum, she went, oh, I'll put you in for it. And she was, uh, and she did. She forgot about it. And I was like, oh, to the next day. And <laughs> <laughs> because this was the second series, wasn't it? So you, you'd seen the first one, Paul Potts was the winner, so you knew what to expect with the programme, it wasn't kind of a big surprise to you, No, was it? I, yeah, you knew what to expect, but in the final you got more confident, and I've just been to Paul Potts, so I've just, yeah. I just came back from his house, but it was really fun over there. It's like his house in a mansion, it's massive, it's huge. Where's his house? Port Talbot. Wow. Yeah, yeah, but you could buy a mansion for four quid in Port Talbot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm only joking. It's six quid. <laughs> and he looked after you and um, treated you right, didn't he? Yeah. I, I, I learned how to cook more than going down there to visit. He loves his cooking. He like, makes things with loads of ingredients, but mm, it was good fun, yeah. So let's, let's go back to that day. I remember, you know, I watched it again. Today, actually, that, that moment when Ant and Deck were at the side of the stage, yeah. you kind of went on there, a bit shy, a little bit nervous, understandably, you know, there's a massive crowd out there and millions of people are going to be watching you. Yeah. And what were you thinking that moment when you walked out on stage and, and there was Piers Morgan and Amanda Holden, very nice, <laughs> and uh, Simon Cowell, what were you thinking? I'm crazy. <laughs> And you're thinking, what's my mum going to do here? <laughs> what's yeah. <laughs> what's <is> it? <laughs> but it, so you could have just walked off at that point and think, okay, I'll go back to the choir. Yeah, <laughs> the exit door was right there. I was just like looking at it. <laughs> and uh, uh, he'd have gone on telling with that. Quick run out the other door. But you, yeah. you didn't. You stayed there, and Simon Cowell started talking to you. And I remember the one thing that would have really freaked me out. He said, "Put the microphone up to your mouth." You thought, oh God, you know, I've done wrong at the beginning, but you got through all of that. Yeah. And when you started singing, did you just kind of slip into professional singer mode then? All I do is, it's, I've learned how to, when I sing, you, your nerves are there, but when I start singing, the nerves go completely. And then when the, when the singing stops, the nerves come back, so you leave. Isn't that weird, eh? Mm. But when I heard the good, the good remark, I was just really pleased. But it went down to like 40,000 to 125 people, but it was like 200,000 people, and it was low. No, maybe it was more people there, but it was like, say, like, it was loads of people at the first audition, absolutely loads of people. Mm -hmm. but, mm. What was the reaction like when you went back home? Because you'd and it, it mustn't have been until it was on TV that you got a proper reaction, but you know, you went home, these people who have given you a pretty hard time because of your singing, did you kind of have the last laugh a little bit with them? You went home and they treated you differently? I don't want to really, I, don't, I just want to kind of concentrate. I don't want to make you know, people jealous and things like that. I just want to carry on with what I want to do, and if they don't like it, it's just to them. It's like, can't make them like it. If they don't like that kind of music, they don't like me. So and that's what Simon Cowell said, wasn't it? When you said, I, I'm, I just carried on singing, he thought that was kind of the, the right thing to do. Yeah, well, he, he asked us, he asked us what my friends think of it, and I just really told the truth. Yeah. So. 